tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam everyone, my name is Reverend Reg and I'm here again for another episode of Practical Magic and here we talk about our own life experiences and how our, our life experiences are actually shaped from our inner world and today I'm very excited because I have my colleague Reverend Adam Hayden who will lead us into the topic of Wicca and Fiery Traditionalists and how it actually affects our practical lives, our personal lives, our professional lives, and how we are all actually interconnected. But before we proceed, I want to invite everyone for a simple affirmation. Please close your eyes and use your right palm to touch the heart. Take a few deep breaths. And together, let's affirm, my life is filled with magic and miracles. I am that I am. My life is filled with magic and miracles. I am that I am. My life is filled with magic and miracles. I am that I am. And feel that inner smile from your heart. You may gently open your eyes. So let me introduce to you our guest. Reverend Adam is an ordained IMM minister, uh, that's International Metaphysical Ministry, a fiery traditionalist, traditionalist, and an initiated witch. As a psychic and medium, he utilizes a wide range of healing modalities, including spiritual coaching, energy, and spell work tarot and petitions to the fiery to help his clients find their own life, their own truth, and their own relationships with the spirits who have been all but forgotten. He is a co-founder of the El Deliva, an elven spiritual tradition growing on the works of J.R.R. Tolkien and a member of the Arrow and a Sorcerer's Covenant of fiery traditionalists who draw who drew on a fairy folklore and legends to build relationships with ancient entities that have all been forgotten. You current welcome, Reverend Adam. How are you doing today? Pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Reg. Thank you for having me on here. Yes, uh, you know, we're so glad to have you and I'm so excited because I have an actual resource person who can really talk about Wicca extensively and fiery traditions because I know that, like you've mentioned, it's actually a forgotten belief system or philosophy. And I know it's very much interconnected to what's happening right now with Mother Nature. And at the same time, like what we were talking about earlier, we can't just neglect these things because it's actually affecting our lives. And it's actually the cause as well of why we are all in this situation of pandemic. So, uh, Reverend Adam, uh, please give us uh, some idea about Wicca first because I know there are a lot of people who are curious about it. Ten years ago, I was actually a devoted Wiccan, but it was only me and my teacher who was practicing it. So we would do our prayer rituals during moon cycles. And I know there's more to it, but we only touched a uh, very short uh, content of it. So please uh, enlighten us about it. Yes, no problem. Um, Wicca um, is actually a reconstruction of a, it's a, basically a, a new religion based off of ancient practices reworked to be practical in the modern age. Wicca um, it was believed early on meant to bend to shape to, to to change the way the world works around us um in fact um one of the greatest definitions of um of magic and witchcraft is the ability to change our, our 
consciousness to change the world around us. And so to be a Wiccan was to bend and shape these forces to achieve um, changes within the world inside us and the world around us. Wicca was founded by um, an old British man named Gerald Gardner in the um, late 50s. And he brought in a lot of ideas that have been debunked over time, but the mytho history that he drew upon allows a lot of Wiccans to look further back before um, Christianity arose, before organized religion really became a thing, where we were able to draw upon resources from um, B- Buddhism, from um, practices that may have originated with pre-Christian religions, such as various festivals and, and like you mentioned, um, one of the things that we do as Wiccans is, is we gather um, usually once a month um, when the moon's full to adore the spirit that is the Queen of Heaven and the Queen of Earth. Um, of the new, individually, naturally, through the whole 99th monkey effect and stuff, we're going to see that change hit into a more global level and eventually something's going to come to a head may not necessarily be all peaceful. It could be very, very damaging. But in the long term, we are going to see that change into a more healthy, balanced energies between the masculine principles and the feminine principles. And I I mean that not necessarily in terms of sex or gender, but within the psychological view of the anima and anima active and the um, intuitive aspects of ourselves we're going to see that that harmony balance between matriarchy and patriarchy where we're going to change from toxic masculinity to a truly godly force that has harmonized the um the intuition the guidance the nurturing with the protective the knowledgeable, masculine, and we're going to see some true balance where men and women and transgender and those of all beliefs and practices will harmonize and will become truly one in spirit, truly united for the common goal of all, and that is to live at peace with the world around us and authentically as ourselves. So was with hand pass, and in fact right now, I am with my third partner. Uh, we have been hand fasted for over like over a year, or almost more than about two years or so. And um, we actually don't even worry about the, the legality of you know getting officially married because that's not important to us. We don't need to be married to be together. And yes. so that's the amazing part. And so we renew our vows every year in the day because it reminds us of why we are together in the first place. That we are yes. just individuals following along the same path, the same goals. And we are, you know, like I said, we are neither free nor bound. I am free to, to be authentically me, but I also choose to respect my partner because I personally am actually um, polyamorous. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I believe that, you know, have many loves and many types of loves not all of it's sexual or romantic you know but we have chosen monogamy because that suits us as a unit yeah. so yes i i i love the fact that more people are, are looking at marriage in a completely different way than the um the traditional patriarchal view of your partner and property law marriage is about property and not necessarily about love you end up spending more in a divorce than you do in the marriage yourself yeah so you get trapped in the money cycle like most divorces i hear are based off of financial insecurity and if if that means anything about legality of marriage and stuff i don't know what what does so for me up and there should be no well, you know, 
witch wars, like in the early 90s and stuff, we had a lot of people saying, well, that's not Wicca. We had people <laughs> claiming each other, you know, at this time, this wasn't even, there was no real internet and stuff. This was people writing letters and stuff to local occult stores and, and, and it just, yeah. So, we don't argue about, you know, the nitty gritty, um, or at least I don't, because so when we get too trapped up in that, we completely miss, you know, life itself. So, why waste your energy and stuff of nitpicking the origin of a term, or the way we construct our circles, or which gods and goddesses and stuff should be working together or not. <laughs> well, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, and that's about the only thing I took from an older person named Lisa Crowley, who was also known as the wickedest man on earth. But that, you know, that phrase right there says it all. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.